In today's video, I'm going to take you through the process as I draw Fibonacci levels inside of the S&P 500. This is useful for those of you that like to find retracement levels where you think the S&P is likely to bounce. If you're unfamiliar with Fibonacci tools, be sure to check out our free Fibonacci course. It's available at tosindicators.com slash Fibonacci hyphen trading. The tool I'm going to be using in today's video is the Fibonacci extensions tool. Now to get started inside of Thinkorswim, let me share why I think we're likely to see a little bit of a retracement here. So far, it feels like the S&P post-election has rallied a little bit away from what I would consider the mean, which is this market pulse line. That's my first clue that I think we're overdue for a reversion to the mean. My second clue is the slingshot squeeze signal that printed. If I load in the back tester, there's some stats that I can gain from this. What it tells me is typically on average, this signal tends to last about 8.2 bars. And since I'm on the daily time frame, about 8.2 trading days. Now this squeeze already fired and it fired much quicker than this eight days typically would take. That tells me this wasn't really a strong squeeze and I would be expecting the momentum to retract a little bit more for this particular squeeze. If we were to take a look at what that momentum looks like, I'm expecting for that momentum to start to decrease, lose itself, and for us to get a pullback towards this 580 price level. 582.30 is where our mean is. Now those are all just thoughts I have. Let's actually try and see if there's any sort of symmetry there. Now, to perform this exercise, I'll use the weekly time frame chart. I think it's easier to spot the swings we'll care about. And I'm going to switch over to the Fibonacci extensions drawing tool. Now, I'm looking for all of the swings in this particular trend, and I want to compare them to this particular swing to see where is it likely to uh, stop. Now, what I mean by this trend is really this entire leg up. So I'm going to compare this swing and compare it to where price is currently at to see what does that pullback look like. I'll compare this swing as well, this swing as well, this swing as well, this swing, and this swing. After, and actually this swing as well. Once we do all that, we should get an idea of what is the personality of the S&P 500 every time it tends to pull back. That's the premise, and once we find that personality, we look for clusters. So let's start this process. I'll start with our first extension. So choose the starting point, the end point, and then I'm going to use our current high price. And that gives me a level near 565. I'm going to repeat that with our second swing here. Whoops. Swing high to swing low, extrapolate from the high and notice how these two swings are somewhat similar. We take our third swing and compare that from our current price we're getting closer to 550. We take our fourth swing, compare that to our current price, we're getting closer to the first cluster that we saw. Take our second price, if I come back in, second, high to low, and we have a few last ones, high to low, and then finally, our high to low. Now, if we come back into our daily time frame. We have a lot of different levels that we see on our chart. Now, these lines, when you print them all, doesn't really give you a lot of insight. You could choose any one of these lines and it would look perfect if it bounced from there. Wouldn't look so perfect if it shot through. So I'm not too keen on the lines alone. I'm more interested in clusters around some key support zones. So now if we combine this Fibonacci cluster with what looks to be, uh, let's say, some obvious support resistance zones, I would say this high is one of them. So that overlaps nicely with this cluster. We have this support zone right here. It doesn't really overlap too nicely. 581 is a little bit below. So maybe one level right here and then a potential gap there. So if you said, hey, we need to pick and choose from these levels, really it's these key points, these pivotal points that we're looking at. Let's use this one for the last one near 550. And it's these levels that we're looking for price to essentially gravitate towards. So our first little cluster, let's call it, is between 575 to this 580 region. If we pulled back there, that would be similar to two previous swings and it overlaps nicely with where we would expect to find some support. That's our first little zone here. 
Our second zone where that support gets a little bit stronger is 550 and we have 565. That's this line also overlaps nicely with Fibonacci and 565 is that one place where we had our Fib clusters. If we drop even below, then we have 550 as that next level down. And if we do drop, notice that it doesn't happen in one go, but you typically have one to two legs down if we were to come to 550. So it's not like we're expecting that straight shot down. Now through this exercise, what we've been able to do is a few different things. We've assumed that 600 is the stopping point for our high. And we've said, hey, if 600.17 is the high price that we're going to form in this move up, where do we expect buyers to step in? Where have they previously stepped in? Where do we expect them to step in using Fibonacci comparing past swings along with past support levels? Using that, we came up with one, two, three, and four different lines. Really, the first one is a zone between 575 to 580. The second one was our key level, 565. And the third one is near 550 if we were to get a slightly deeper pullback. I hope you found this video useful for a practical example of how to use the Fibonacci extensions tool. If you want a slightly slower step-by-step -step guide that walks you through how to use this tool, be sure to check out module three in our free Fibonacci trading course. Take care everyone, good luck trading, and I'll see you in our next update.